Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I, Dr. Hena Javeri, Fellow in Vitria Retina and Ocular Oncology, bring to you this month's five interesting articles. The first article compares the efficacy of A versus C3FA tamponade with pars plana vitrectomy in highly myopic eyes with macular holes. In this retrospective study, 63 eyes in A group and 63 in C3F8 group were further subdivided according to hole diameter and axial length. Anatomical and functional outcomes were compared. The mean follow-up period was 17.16 plus minus 17.9 months. The initial closure rate in the A group was 85.7% and that with C3F8 was 83.7%, which was not statistically significant. There was no difference between tamponades in the same subgroup as well. Post-operative BCVA was significantly improved in both groups, but no difference was noted between them. Logistic regression showed that age, minimum linear diameter and axial length were risk factors for initial closure rate, and pre-operative BCVA was the only factor associated with post-operative best corrected vision. The authors thus concluded that AIR was as good a tamponade as C3F8 and could be considered in such cases of highly myopic eyes with macular hole. The next study analyzes the clinical features of refractory age-related macular degeneration patients associated with a poor response to three loading anti-VEGF injections. 90 patients treated with three consecutive anti-VEGF injections were divided into two groups, that is with and without residual fluid on OCT images. The choroidal thickness on OCT differed significantly between the two groups. On Opta, the presence of branching, loops, and a peripheral arcade differed significantly, and logistic regression analysis showed that the initial choroidal thickness, presence of loops, and peripheral arcade was significantly associated with a poorer response to three loading anti-VEGF injections in typical exudative age-related macular degeneration patients. The next study evaluated the morphologic alterations on ICGA in choroidal veins in eyes with typical neovascular age-related macular degeneration and polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. The study included 36 eyes of AMD, 34 of PCB, and 59 fellow eyes. The mean subfoveal choroidal thickness was found to be 167 microns in AMD and 219 microns in PCB patients. Macular anastomosis was common in both. Dilated halo veins were numerically more common in PCB patients, while vascular caliber variation was numerically more common in AMD. The presence of all three features was more common in the presenting eyes with PCV compared to AMV, and on multivariate analysis, every increase of 100 microns of choroidal thickness conferred a 2.75 risk of having all three features present. Choroidal vascular remodeling is common in both AMD and PCV patients, but it may be driven by different stimuli. The next article compared the technique of embedding versus conventional ILM peeling in 23 and 17 eyes respectively, having lamellar macular hole with associated epiretinal proliferation. The mean follow-up of the patients was 23 months. The preoperative BCVA and central retinal thickness was similar between the two groups. The BCVA at three months and at the final visit, as well as the central retinal thickness, was significantly better in the group that underwent embedding. Five eyes in the conventional ILMP group developed macular hole postoperatively, while no eyes in the embedded group developed the same. The authors therefore suggest that LHEP embedding technique for lamellar macular hole with epiretinal proliferation may be a better procedure than conventional ILM peeling. The next study looks into the objective grading of posterior segment inflammation through OCT scans and comparing the same with clinical grading. The study included 222 eyes of 74 patients at three time points, that is with active, with clinically improving, and with resolved inflammation. The density of the vitreous cells was calculated on each OCT scan manually and automatically through an algorithm. Vitreous haze was indirectly measured by calculating the vitreous is to RPE relative intensity manually and automatically. Both vitreous cell density and the vitreous to RPE relative intensity significantly decreased over time, 
the cell density correlated with clinical grading with a significant increase at each grade of the national eye inflammation scale. The vitreous to RPE intensity was positively correlated with the clinical grade overall, but there was no significant difference when comparing the continuous grades of the NEI scale. The study indicates that we could grade posterior segment inflammation objectively and reliably through OCT scans. That's it for now. See you next month.